It's an early morning. Today is a big day. Today we are receiving our roaster. It's about eight months in the making. Right outside that door, it's there. <sighs> Time to bring it inside. Hopefully you can hear me out right here. I'm roasting right now. I'm actually about to roast this coffee right here. This is actually a beautiful double fermentation thermal shock wash from Diego Bermudez. It's been incredibly popular and this coffee is incredibly sweet. Diego Bermudez, if you're not aware of who he is, he's a producer in Colombia doing fantastic work. Some of the best, I would argue. And his coffees are very, very different. They're just very sweet, very, very creamy and we have impressions of like coconut, strawberry, lychee. As you can see, I'm roasting here on a Diedrich IR12 and that crate that you saw that arrived, that's our new Loring. So that's gonna be installed in the next month or so, but there's a whole process, getting gas fitters, tradesmen to come in, we have to get it inspected. So that'll be up and going soon. But this is a 12 kilo roaster and that Loring is actually a seven kilo roaster. And they're so powerful that you can do faster batches and you can do better in between protocols. So even though this is a 12 kilo roaster, we're actually gonna be almost doubling our production on a smaller Loring. Lorings are very interesting for many reasons. Now, I'm gonna throw this batch in, then I'll explain why. Okay, let me give you a rundown of what's going on with this roaster. So right now it's roasting that coffee that we just put in. I'm gonna keep a close eye on these graphs. I might have to get up, change some settings, but like I said, this is Diego Bermudez, Colombian, a really sweet, tasty coffee. With the Diedrich, what's happening is right in here, there's a little glass. Well, let me show you. So as you saw, there's a flame in there. There's actually a flame on both sides of this drum, and it's two infrared burners for the Diedrichs. And as you adjust the gas, it turns the flame hotter or less hot. And what happens is there's also air being sucked through this drum right now. And so that air is also heated up and then the air is pushed through the drum. And it does that for a few reasons. The first one is to get all the smoke coming off of the coffee actually out of the roaster. But the major reason of why it does that is actually for convective heat transfer. If you think of like an oven, like an air fryer, it uses hot air and it blows it on whatever food you're trying to cook. Well, same is true with coffee roasting. It's most roasters are primarily convection roasters. So there's hot air being pulled through over top of those infrared burners, heating that air up and passing through a drum that's spinning and tumbling those coffee beans, throwing them in the air. And as that air is passing through those beans, it's heating those up and obviously roasting the coffee. Now the roast is almost done, so I'm gonna have to move back and forth here. Now where lowering roasters are different is it doesn't have a flame underneath this spinning drum. In fact, it doesn't even have a spinning drum at all. It has arms that spin and tumble and agitate the coffee beans, kind of like a traditional drum does. But where it differs is it actually has an external cyclone that heats up hot air and forces the air through the drum, so there's no flame underneath the drum. Now we're about to hit first crack, which is the latter part of the development of the coffee. It's actually what starts the development phase, which is what we call it when we start measuring time post first crack, which has a lot to do with the chemistry, the flavors we experience, but it's a very sensitive time, so I'm gonna get back to roasting. Now, the reason why we went with a Loring versus something like the Diedrich, it was actually for many reasons. Number one was because Lorings, in my opinion, are some of the best roasters in the world for many reasons, but that main reason would be that convection heat transfer technology. It's an air roaster. Uh, they call them a hybrid roaster because it's not a fluid bed roaster where the beans are being agitated by the air as well. It does have those similarities to a drum in terms of the beans being agitated and tumbled like a drum roaster, but it is only being roasted by hot air. Loring's also have a lot of technology built into the roaster to have some automation available to you to as a roaster who's incredibly busy, where something like this, I need to be there for every little adjustment of gas 
which is just obviously something that isn't super modern in the technology that we have today. So Loring's have that. It's really good for the environment. Essentially, any kind of roaster would put off smoke. Any smoke coming off of the coffee beans would be put out into the environment unless you have an afterburner, which is an incredibly expensive piece of technology. But Loring's actually have an afterburner built into them. So they actually recycle the air that goes through the roaster. And that cyclone that actually heats the hot air eliminates the majority of contaminants. And so the air going out into the environment is just hot. It's not filled with contaminants and smoke. Now, those are the few reasons that we went with Loring. We think they are some of the best roasters in the world, if not the best roaster in the world. We could have gone with any roaster. We just want to invest in the best piece of technology and equipment for September. And we felt Loring was the way to do that. They also had this beautiful seven kilogram roaster, which is small, it's compact, and it's still very powerful. And like I said, we can double the production of a 12 kilogram roaster and a smaller roaster, smaller footprint, better for the environment. We also think they make some of the tastiest coffee because of that convection technology. The drum doesn't get as hot. And so you don't have as much conductive heat to transfer. Conductive heat transfer is a whole nother topic, but it really can make coffee taste a little tarry, a little bit more brown sugar, a little more caramel, which some people prefer. It's a reason why some people buy roasters like Probats, Diedrichs, and so on. For us, we wanted the cleanest coffee possible with lots of vibrancy. So that's one of the main reasons we ended up purchasing a Loring, but they're incredibly expensive. So it's an incredibly big investment for our business. And that is why it's so exciting to see it arrive in September. Not to mention they have like a two year wait right now for these roasters. They're incredibly high demand. So once we're done here, I'm gonna finish up doing a few more batches here at our current roasting setup here at Morning Owl in Ottawa. But once we're done here, we're gonna head back over to the roaster and we're gonna open up that crate. So that's just a little sneak peek at our roaster. I will make you wait a little longer because we do need to still set it up. We need to have our tradesmen come in and certify it and all of that. So we're gonna bring you along in the whole process, but I do need to say thank you for watching because it's really cool to be able to bring all of you along in this journey. It's not something that happens a lot where you get to see the build out of a roastery. So we're gonna try to document, at least I'm gonna try and document as much as possible. So if you appreciate this kind of content, if you like something different like this, please hit the like button and please share it with a friend. These videos tend not to do as well on the algorithm and as a reason why so many people don't make this kind of content. So you can help change that. Also leave a comment down below what you wanna see in the future. That would be incredibly helpful. In the future, I'm gonna see if I can set up some interviews with especially Doug Graff, who's gonna be coming to actually commission our roaster. He works for Loring and he's incredibly knowledgeable. And we're excited to have Doug come to September, set it all up and maybe we can set up a camera and ask him some questions. So if you have any, write them down below. Obviously, if you are interested in trying September coffee, try coffee that's currently being roasted on the Diedrich, but by the time you watch this, could be on the Loring. That's all linked down below. Our store is there. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys all in the next video. I love every single one of you. Have a wonderful day. Peace.